Our most gracious Heavenly Father, not only do we love you, praise you, we thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to die that I might live again. Lord, we are blessed of all congregations because we know Jesus Christ is our Savior. It's going to be harder out in the world, Lord, as we see people are standing up strongly against you and your word. And we pray, Lord, the day is coming when you will knock them down and make them beg for forgiveness. And again, Lord, we just call upon you in this very time that your spirit might lead us to learn more and that we might be able to walk even more circumspectly in the years ahead. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're now in Genesis, the fourth chapter. The book of Genesis, the foundation of our Christian walk, our Christian word. In the first part, we realize that God created the heavens and earth, everything that's in it. He even gave us time. I don't know if it's daylight or regular time, but He gave us time. He shed blood in Genesis, a forerunner, forerunner of Jesus Christ shedding His blood. Man and woman are one. Now we're going to find the mesh, Cain's son. Did not follow that. And Cain's life was <coughs> one of walking and talking with God, but never following Him. So we're blessed of all people that we know to follow God's Word. He didn't ask for forgiveness. He just kept walking. And, and he was actually talking with God, but yet he could not feel the need to follow God. Now we're going to find Cain's generation is cut off at the flood. No longer do they have any generations coming from Cain. And next Sunday we'll be looking at Seth. His generation went down to Noah, the flood, and on to Jesus Christ. So he was the seed that she thought she had first in Cain. And we're blessed of all people. Oh, how blessed we are. Because more and more people are standing up and saying, I don't believe in God. You don't have to do this. The Muslims are now infiltrating our Congress. And he's going to get Katie bar the door. And they're absolutely against anything that's religious of Christianity. And they're speaking out. So, doest thou well? That's what God asked Cain. Doest thou well? Well, how do we know we're doing well? We have to check the Word of God. And so the way we know we're doing well is with the heart filled, <coughs> with love of God, make us us, do us well. It's not only working, but works that we do intend to please God. No matter what work we're doing, at work work, at home, at church, we need to come to please God. That was our only that's how we know we do as well. Opening an orphanage, climbing the highest mountain, singing the most beautiful solo, preaching the best sermon ever heard. These are but a clanging symbol if no love to God. We're doing it for man. Man's praise and man's glory. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. He didn't say not if you want to, but keep them. We don't have a choice. We must keep them. And Colossians 3.24 explains that for us. Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of your inheritance, for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respecter of persons. We must follow God's word to accomplish what he tells us to do. Does not mean we feel good about it. We may not be excited to do what we need to do. Our emotions are going against us. Maybe going in another direction. Have you ever had a friend, or maybe not a friend, who calls you a few names and tells you you're stupid and goes on all these other things? Yet yeah, we're commanded to pray for them. Pray for those who despitefully use us. Wow. That's the farthest thing from our mind. But it's God's command in Matthew 5, 44. 
But I say, if you love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So emotions can get in the way of our Christian life. Now that guy or woman has really treated me terribly bad, and I, I ain't never going to forgive them, but the Bible says you've got to forgive them, got to love them, and treat them fairly. Well, the psalmist did something that could help us. When we do not want to do any of God's commands, let us follow the example of the psalmist. To fight against depression, make following God's commands easier. The psalmist began to store up in his mind what God had done for him. As we think what God has done for us, He sent His Son Jesus to die on the cross. He gives us a home, a house, food, everything. And He wants us to do just a little bit down here. So if we keep everything in perspective, we will do that down here, what God calls us to do. Because He's done so much, He's preparing for us a home in heaven. He's coming to get us again. And all we have to do is to follow His Word. Cain was caught in a fit of jealousy. You ever been jealous of somebody? Well, it's a terrible thing. And he got into a fit, did not like, because God didn't like the way he worshipped. Here he's talking to God, and God said, that your worship is not the right way. We find that in the fifth verse. But unto Cain and his offering had no respect. And Cain was very wroth. And his countenance failed. Cain should have sought what? God's word. God's word. <clears throat> and God, and he should have asked, he should have said, God, how should I worship? What was wrong with my worship? Tell me so that I can do it better. Well, please be aware that this chapter deals with the generation of Cain and has similar sounding names as the one to Seth's generation, which will be in the fifth chapter next week. Cain is doing the work of who? <coughs> Starts with a big S. But I don't always spell it with a big S. My <laughs> spell checker says, you've got that wrong. Said, no, no. But he's doing Satan's work. And his generations ended with the flood. And next week we'll be doing Seth, and he has a lot of the same names. So you find here that the parallel universe continues. God has something, Satan tries to mimic it. So this is Satan's generation is going to be cut off at the end of time. So we can be remember and be ready for that, because we're going to be in God's generation. We're going to go on. Those in Satan's generation are going to be cut off. And the generation of Seth produced Noah. And he's the seed that, came, that Adam and Eve thought was going to bring on the generation of Jesus. So Cain and Abel's first worship didn't go well. You know, any church is like that. Where it didn't go well, they split every five minutes. I heard about a church that split three times in about two months. Well, somebody didn't like something. And they weren't standing on the Word of God. They didn't want to stand on the Word of God. And that's the problem all churches have. Is do I stand on the Word of God or not? God lectures Cain about his worship. Cain's going to be distraught. How can you do that to me? Cain is not seeking forgiveness. And he received a pretty bad punishment. And generations of Cain were industrial workers. In the birth of Seth, men be called, began to call on the word of the Lord. Well, let's look at uh, chapter 4, the first verse. Children are what? A blessing from the Lord. And we have to work on them to keep them that way. Adam knew his, Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. She thought that there's going to be the seed for all the generations to come, but he's not going to be that way. And we remember Psalms 123, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. 
Now she's going to have another baby. And she again buried his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now in Jewish families, the firstborn gets all the prestige, gets all the land, most of the land, gets all this, gets all that. So he is really sitting in the right spot, Cain is. But we find in the Old Testament, as God walks through the Old Testament, firstborn didn't get anything hardly. Because God did it based on their love of God and not where they were born. So a lot of people think they're born into a prestige family, but only the way you can be born is through Jesus Christ. We we're going to see that following God's commandments, the most important thing is He is not a respecter of persons. Now, Billy Graham did lots and lots of good works. But had he not known Jesus Christ as his Savior, he'd been wasting his time. And so, now they're going to go to worship together. Let us see how the worship goes. We don't know who's leading the songs and playing the piano and that kind of thing. But anyhow, they came and in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the first of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and his offering. First thing we notice here is the blood. The blood has a trail all the way through the Bible unto Jesus. And it reminds us that Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. His sacrifice was all blood offerings, a true prophecy of the blood of Jesus that was to come. <coughs> But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Well, Cain didn't worship properly. We don't really know for sure what it was, whether his attitude or whether he didn't pay any attention to what God wanted him to do, or offered himself. He was not caring what he gave, maybe. But God lectures Cain about his worship, and Cain becomes distraught. When we're caught in sin, what must we do? Ask God's forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness. Go to God and seek proper direction. <clears throat> and the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Why is thy countenance fallen? In the seventh verse he says, If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire. And thou shalt rule over him. He said, look, Cain, sin can be overcome. And we need to know that. No matter what our sin is, God will forgive us except the one sin, not accepting Jesus Christ as our Savior. By listening to what God tells us and follow it, God reminds him, hey, you're the firstborn child. And in the driver's seat, all things are set up for your future. You shall rule over your brother." Well, it did not satisfy Cain because his jealousy festered. And we're going to find out he's going to kill Cain. He did not like, and like the world today, whose God is telling what God is telling us today, tell us what to do. What do you think Cain's going to do? Is he going to listen to the Lord? No, he's not going to listen. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they're in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. You young upstart brother, you're making me look bad. I'm going to take care of you. He got his revenge, but then he's got to accept what? Starts with a C. Consequences. Consequences. With sin comes consequences. Now, Cain did not seek forgiveness. Now, the apple does not fall from, far from the tree. Is he going to own up to his sin? Remember his parents, did they own up to their sin? <laughs> so, they did not put a good background for him in what they did. And we find that in the ninth verse. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? <laughs> and he said, I know not, am I my brother's keeper? Well, are we our brother's keepers? Yes. yes. Well, call. What is the best thing to do? Own up. 
confess and ask for forgiveness. Did his parents do that? No. The sins of the father reach unto the third and fourth generation. And this is just the second generation. So we find it is there. Well, there are, these are the consequences of Cain's sin. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed of the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. His blood cries, Abel's blood cries out for vengeance. <coughs> what does Jesus' blood cry out to us? It starts with the hymn. Mercy. Mercy. Mercy and forgiveness. Hebrews 12, 24. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. God made it hard for Adam to grow in the ground, give him all those things. You don't have to do the sweat of the blood. You have thorns and thistles coming up. If you've done much farming and you have to clear new land, you know how much it is. You get to dig up the roots for it. It's a real pain. So he had to go out and dig up all the roots, plow everything, and get all those things done. But we found out that uh, he takes that away from Cain. You can't till the ground anymore. That's what Cain did. He was tilling of the ground. And we find that in the 12th verse. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. Additional curse to what he gave to Adam. Nothing will produce. And he's got to be a vagabond through all the world. And he said, you know, like he said, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. That's what he told Adam. He says, you shall wander for the rest of your life. You'll not have a home. You can't have a place you call home. You're going to be wandering. You're going to be looking over your shoulder. Because in that day, and I don't know about the Jewish people today, but if somebody kills your relative, you have to go and kill the killer. And so all of Abel's relatives were under the gun to go and kill Cain. What is it that Cain refuses to say to the Lord? Lived with him all of his life. He never said, forgive me. Have mercy on me. But he did say something that we hear a whole lot of. What it starts with a P and a party? P. Pity party. <coughs> well, that's what he's going to have. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. From thy face shall I be hid. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. He's still not throwing himself on the mercy of the Lord. He's complaining. Lord, this is too much. This is not fair. You ever heard that? <coughs> this is not fair. He's driven out from his people. He's looking over his shoulder to see if somebody's coming to kill him. The Jewish relatives of the one killed was under responsibility to kill the killer. No way to make a living. Wondering with no place to call home. Well, the Lord did show him mercy. And when you throw that pity party, the Lord showed him mercy and gave him protection. In the 15th verse, and the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any fire him and kill him. Well, with this mark, what is still available? Forgiveness. No matter how far you've gone, no matter where you are, you can always get forgiveness from God. And you can ask for it. And thankfulness. We see like so many of this world that they too will not repent and ask forgiveness. Now we're going to look at the generations of Cain and we'll notice that we recognize some of these names but they're not really the names that go on in the Bible. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, she conceived and buried Enoch, and he built a city, called the name of the city after his son Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begat Mahajael, 
and Mehejiel beget Methusael, and Methusael beget Lamish. Now, here's where <coughs> it even gets where he forgets what God said back in Genesis earlier. For a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one. Well, let's see what Lamesh thought about that. And Lamesh took unto him two wives. The name of one was Ada, the name of the other Zillah. He did not follow what God had said in Genesis 2.24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Now this dual marriage is practiced by cults, and it's defended. And even today's world is being defended all over the world. What is wrong here according to God's word? One wife, one man. And children have not been taught. And 20th verse, and Ada by Jebel, Jebel, and he was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all such as handled the harp and organ. And Zillah, she also bare to a king, an instructor of air artificer in brass and iron. And the sister to a king was Naamath. And Lamath, Lamish said unto his wife, Adam and Zillah, Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamish, hearken unto my speech. For I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly, Lamesh, seventy and sevenfold. But well, what is the problem here? Which we do a lot of. Rationalize. <laughs> yeah. He's comparing his doing to my doing. Actually, mine was self-defense. And he killed out of anger. So Lamesh is comparing his killing and self-defense to Cain killing his brother. I know the Lord will punish him more and he's going to forgive me more. We cannot compare our lives to other. People go around and say, they are so wicked, these people over here. I know God will forgive me without me asking him because I'm so much better. I'm not like so and so and I don't do things he has done and God will bless me. And I hear churches going on like that. You know, our church is so good, we don't do so and so or we do so and so. Well, my old mother comes to the rescue here and I've said this several times. You can put them all in a tow sack, jumble them up, and you might see who comes out first. Because we might consider 30 little bitty sins not as bad as this one we call a big sin. But God says they're all the same. Sin is sin, and you have to get forgiveness. Now we're going to find that the birth of Seth, which we'll take up next week, begin, and men begin to call on the Lord. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. But God said, She hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. Perhaps she had some kind of uh, intimation that this son was to be the forerunner of the promised seed. He really was the seed. The mention of Seth was an indication of her religious training and valued Seth's religion above all her children. And to Seth, him also, there was born a son. He called his name Enos, and began man to call upon the name of the Lord. To call themselves by the name of the Lord, that is, some persons, by an open profession of true religion, begin to protest. They begin to protest all these things Cain was doing. Said, no, no, we're going to do it right. We're going to follow the Lord. And we need to see the wickedness of the world around us. We need to separate. We need to protest what they're doing. And we need to tell them. Because the Bible says that all instructions are given by God and good for the reproof. And that is, we can tell them that they're doing the wrong way. So, our, we need to separate ourselves from the idolatrous and irreligious persons and call on the Lord as he worships. Cain and Abel's first worship did not go well as many churches today. They're not standing on the word. They're standing on their emotions. And you just can't have it that way. Your emotions can help you when you're feeling good, doing the right thing, that's okay. But when you say, well, you know, I, I, 
I can abort this baby. No way can you abort that baby. No way can you accept not standing on the Word of God. I mean, our big leaders, uh, leaders in New York, Kumo, said, you know, kill all those babies you want. And the guy in Virginia said the same thing. Well, even after he's born, if you don't want him, kill him. And they put you in jail for killing a turtle egg. Maybe get 10 or 15 years. And yet we don't consider that baby as important. And they want to bring everybody in from Mexico. And yet they want to kill our babies. I don't understand how you can have that kind of logic in your life except you don't believe in God and want to follow His will. Well, we find jealousy can get us into a lot of trouble. And it works up into anger. And even though he had done wrong, <coughs> Cain walked throughout his life without ever asking for forgiveness. So, he spent his whole life not following God's Word. So let us not be like Cain today, become an unrepentant sinner facing the wrath of God. We have learned today that Jesus' blood was not like Abel's. Abel's blood cried out for vengeance, but Jesus' blood cries out for mercy that come to him and believe. The punishment for the unrepentant sinner today is worse than Cain. Cain had to wonder, but the people out of the world do not know what they're being saved from. You know, as preachers, we've got to wave and bounce. We've got to tell them what hell's like. We've got to tell them what God's love like and let them choose. You know, when I was growing up, uh, my first preacher, all I did was preach, you're going to go to hell if you sin every Sunday. That was the same message. And so today's preachers are going the other way. They don't mention hell. They don't know what people are being saved from. So we need to encourage them and tell them the horribleness of hell and that the love of God stands ready to deliver them. 